the economics of Deuteronomy chapter 28, and also Matthew chapter 6, amen? Matthew chapter 6 and Deuteronomy chapter 28, amen? And you know I'm preaching a series on keys. And the last couple of weeks, the first week was the key of obedience. The second key is the key of the word. And today, uh, I, I brought a different key with me today, but today is the key of seeking. Everybody look to say, today is the key, today is the key of, seeking. of seeking. The Lord says, seek me, seek me. Why I can be found. You know, when you're looking for something, you're going to move anything out of the way to find it. You know, it's amazing how you can tell your children or your grandchildren, go in there and get me so-and-so-and-so. And, so and, so. and they go in there and look, but they don't see it. And the only time they see it is when you get up in the first place and go get it, because you know where it is, but they didn't find it because they didn't seek for it. Amen. But when you're looking for the Lord, if you're seeking for him, you can find him. Amen. And he says, seek me while yet I can be found. Amen. God saying to you and I, I am available if you're looking for me. Amen. Ain't that right? Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for God every day. Amen. I'm looking for the Holy Ghost every day Amen. because I need the power in my life. Amen? Amen? When you're dealing with things and situations and people and circumstances and issues, come on somebody, when you're dealing with issues, there ain't time to go get a, go get a box of tissue. But you got to go to God in prayer. Yeah. And if you go to God in prayer and you're sincere, you'll find him. Yeah. Ain't that right? Yeah. Amen. So I want you to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1. And then we're going to Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 27. Amen. Amen. So Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting at verse 1. Today's message and lead, key, uh, 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 title is Keys to Seeking. That's one of the seven to eight, ten keys that's available to unlocking doors that are going on in your life. You want something from God? You first have to maintain your holiness. Amen. Maintain uh, your obedience. Maintain reading God's word. There are some things in life, I've always said and I say again, when I turn 40, ha, huh, I remember I wanted to really stay in good shape. Amen. I never was the type of person that could build up muscles, and, and I'm kind of jealous of those who can do that and have big muscles. That's all right. I just want one of them people that couldn't do it. But one thing I learned when I turned 40, I realized ain't no use of me trying to get any big muscle, but I realized I'm going to maintain what I have. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you have to maintain what you have. And don't think for one minute people ain't maintaining. Some of these old women, 70, 80, 90 years old, come on, somebody, they still want to look good. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Somebody say amen. amen. Some of these old men still want to think they got it going on. Come on, somebody. Ain't nothing wrong with that as long as you keep it in a holy perspective. Amen. Oh, my Lord. Everybody got Deuteronomy chapter 28? Amen. All right, you read with me here. In chapter 28, it teaches us, if you shall come, it shall come to pass. If thou shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord. If you what? Seek and hearken to him diligently unto the voice of the Lord uh, thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high my God, above all nations of the earth. Amen. I know he's talking to Israel, but he's talking to you and me too. Amen. Verse 2, he says, and all these blessings shall come to thee. Everybody say, all my blessings, all my blessings come, to me. come to me. If you don't say it, it ain't going to happen. You got to say, all my blessings, all my blessings come, to me. come to me. Come on, somebody. Amen. And overtake thee. Oh, my God. Everybody say, blessing, blessing. Overtake, me. overtake me. All my blessings come to me, All my blessings come to me. And, overtake me. and overtake me. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt thou be the fruit of thy body, 
and the fruit of thy ground. Amen. Blessed shall the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy king, and the flocks of thy sheep. I heard somebody say that God owned cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. And he owned all the sweet potatoes in the ground. Amen. Are y'all with me on this? Yes. And ain't nothing wrong with sweet potato pie. I, I mean, I come from a time where, where, where you, if you didn't have nothing else to eat, oh, come on, somebody, uh, get yourself a sweet potato, and you eat that sweet potato like an apple. And I mean, it was, it was smack lip tasting good. It was like eating a carrot. Come on, somebody. But it filled that hunger pain. See, y'all might think I'm crazy, but I will turn on a sweet potato in a minute. Come on, somebody. You, you, you at lunch and you ain't got nothing else to eat? Come on, somebody. I'll take me a sweet potato and put it in my bag. Don't y'all look at me like that. I know what I'm talking about. You know, you, you get hungry and hunger pains start talking to you. You liable to pull out anything. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't with me right now. Somebody had to say amen. amen. Thank God for sweet potatoes. Verse 3 says, uh, uh, who, who has sweet potatoes for a hand? So y'all don't think that's what I'm talking about. Now, you, now I hope what you think for one minute I've been eating sweet potatoes by myself. Now. <laughs> verse, verse 4, he says now, blessed shall be the fruit of all that you have. And verse 5 says, blessed shall be thy baskets and thy store. Amen. Your shells at home will be blessed. Amen. Your job uh, shells will be blessed. Amen. Your home shall be blessed. Amen. Your car shall be blessed. Your shoe shall be blessed. Oh, come on, somebody. You might not bless your shoe unless a spider crawl up in your, your shoe. Come on, somebody. And the worst thing you want is a spider in your shoe. Oh, my God. Blessed shall be the basket. Verse 6 says, Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. You know, you got to pray and say, Lord, bless me before I leave this house. Amen. And while I'm out, bless me so I can get back to this house. Amen. Blessed thou be coming in, and blessed when thou be going out. Amen. My God, verse 7 says, And the Lord shall come, uh, with the Lord shall cause thy enemy that rise up against thee uh, to be smitten, to be knocked down, to be defeated before thy face. Amen. Come on, somebody. Come on, anybody. And come on, everybody. They shall come out against thee one way. The enemy will come out one way. But God said, when I finish with the devil, when he finish coming and getting in your face, he going to come one way, one way. But in the last part of the verse that God said, I'm going to send him out seven ways. In other words, he's going he to leave you losing his mind. He's going to leave you and recognize who he was bothering with. Are y'all with me on that? The enemy may come one way, but God said, I'll send him in seven different ways. He'll leave you so fast, it will make his head swim. That's the truth. Don't tell me what God can't do. The enemy may show up in your face and talk trash, but God said, I'll show you how to talk trash. I'll send him out of your presence, and he'll be running in seven different directions. You ever seen somebody scared out of their mind and they don't know what way to run? Some of y'all been like that too. Don't you act like that. Come on, somebody. God said, I'll send him in seven different directions. Ain't that power? Ain't that power? The man that kind of run up on you, going to call himself, going to rob you after you didn't got paid? God said, I will mess his mind up. Come on, somebody. And he'll go and do something else and forget all about you. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 8 says, The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in the storehouse. God said, I'm going to bless your storehouse. And in all that thou, thou settest thy hands, everybody said, my hands, my hands. Hand. Every time I set my hand to do something, it's going to be blessed. Every time I set my hand to touch something, it's going to be blessed. It's my hand, it's my hand. It's the hand that God touched before I touch. There ain't a place that God don't pour that God's hand won't help. Amen. My, my, my. You need to understand who we serve. Yes. Look at somebody and say, you don't know who you serve. Oh, yes, my, 
my God. God can take care of everything. Amen. You know, keeping the Ten Commandments is not multiple choice. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. All you got to do is obey God's word. And God says, I'm going to bless you. How many like being blessed? How many like being blessed? Reach over and tell somebody and say, God bless you. When you reach over and touch him, you're transferring power. You're transferring anointing. You're transferring that which God has put in your hand. And you're going to get it all back. Hallelujah. Anything you do, you can't be God-given. The more you give, the more God gives back to you. If you don't believe it, try it out. You didn't lost time. You didn't lost money. You didn't lost talent. God will give it all back to you. And he shall bless thee in the land. Everything your hand touch, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Verse 9 says, stay with me now. Verse 9 says, the Lord shall establish thee, a holy people, unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. Verse 10 says, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art. People are going to recognize, you better leave that man alone. That man is called of God. You better leave that woman alone. Can't you see holiness all over her? Can't you see everything she do, God set it in order? You need to understand the power of God. When you in God's stead, when you keeping his commandment, he said, ask what you will, and it shall be granted unto thee. All you do is keep his commandment, obey his statute, keep his word, and he'll give you a key to seek him, and you can unlock any door. Any door that seems to be shut and locked, God can give you power to unlock it. Oh, my God, many of us got keys that, that fit things that won't unlock. Some of us got keys that go to stuff. We don't even remember what they go to. But I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because it will bring back to your remembrance the thing that you need to pray for and the things you need to ask for. And sometimes you got a locked out relationship. God can give you a power through his word to unlock that relationship. Well, you didn't speak to folks no more. God said, I'm going to give you power to speak now. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 11 says, and the Lord shall make her, uh, make thee plenteous in good. Yeah. Y'all heard that candy called plenty and good? Yeah. Come on, somebody. The kids can tell you everything from Skittles to plenty and good. Ain't nothing new under the sun. And in the fruits of thy body, yeah. God said, I'm going to call you to have children and multiply. And the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of the ground. Everything in the land which the Lord swore unto thee, thy father, I'm going to give it to thee. Now, how can you outbeat God giving? Verse 12 says, and the Lord shall open unto thee his good, what? Treasure. The Lord going to open it. You, you, can you imagine what God got in his treasure chest? Can y'all phantom in your mind what God got in his treasure chest? Y'all got some, some precious thing locked away. People don't even know what you got. Come on, somebody. And if they were to see it, come on, somebody. Oh, my Lord. They would be surprised. Can you imagine God go to his treasure chest? Open it up. Things that are in there, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Now have it ever entered to the heart of man the things that God got in store for them that love him and call according to his purpose. Amen. God got things already stored up for you. You don't even have you can't even imagine what he has for you and I. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I want you to understand this thing real clear. He says, God in verse 12, the Lord shall open unto thee the good treasure. The heaven to give in the rain and in thy land in the season and to bless all the works of thy what? Somebody said my hands. My hands. Bless the works of my hands. Bless the works of my hands. Thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. My, my, my. And the Lord God shall make thee the head and not the tail. Somebody said, Lord, gonna make me the head. And not, the tail. and not the tail. Come on, somebody. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath 
If thou, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day. Look how God is just rearranging everything. Come on, somebody. When somebody trying to push you in the back, God turn the line around and make you in the front. Come on, somebody. You got to understand how God operates. All you got to do is observe his ways. Hallelujah. All you got to do is pay attention to what God is doing. Amen. And in verse 14, he says, And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. God said, If you serve me, I'll do whatever in my power to bring about peace and serenity in your life. I'll bring even the enemy at bay and cause you to prosper in the day when everybody is calling out names that they don't know. God is in the power of business where he can give you power over the enemy. Are y'all with me on this? But you got to seek him with all your heart. You got to seek him with all your mind. You got to seek him with all your soul. You got to move everything out of the way and don't let nothing stand between you and serving God. Amen. My, my, my. Turn to Matthew chapter 6. Just be with me for a moment. Matthew chapter 6. I know y'all know the passage of scripture here, but I want you to zero in. When you get a chance, I want you to read it, the entire chapter. But go right up to chapter 30, 27. Tw uh, chapter 6, verse 27. Chapter 6 of Matthew, verse 27. He says, which of you, by taking thought, can change your stature? Who in here can change their height one inch? Nobody. Nobody. Ain't that right? Amen. God put power on your life that when you was a child, you grew to a certain height and then you stopped. Yes. Ain't that right? Amen. And you can't add nothing to that height. I know there were platform shoes. I know years ago there was bell bottoms with platforms. And everybody wanted to look tall. Come on, somebody. But I'm here to tell you that's man-made. Yeah. But God is saying to you and I, and why take ye thoughts in verse 28 for the clothes you got? He said, consider the lily of the field, how they grow and they toil not, neither do they spin. In verse 29 he says, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon, and all his glory was not compared to like the one of these uh, lilies of the valley. Therefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not how much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Amen. Stay with me a few more verses. Therefore, take no thoughts, saying, what shall we eat? God has got your food. Amen. Come on, somebody. Or what shall I drink? God got your drink. Or where, where all shall you be clothed? God know how to clothe you in righteousness. Hallelujah. For after all these things, the Gentile, those that will not receive Christ, they seek after all these things, that they have need of all these things. But Jesus said to his disciples in verse 33 to sum up, when you're going to seek me, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And everything you've been looking for, everything you've been hoping for, everything you've been seeking out as a key in your life, God said, I'm going to give it to you. Look at somebody say, God is able to supply all your needs. You see, one of the keys to prosperity and wealth, and they ain't talking about physical, I'm talking about spiritual. Because when you see God first, everything that the world is looking at is all materialistic. But the most important thing is having a strong, powerful relationship with Christ. Oh, my, my, my. It's important that you and I understand that we didn't just come into this world because God just wanted us here yes. and to gain great material wealth. Yes. You see, because all you got to do is stop and take a look around the world and see 
out of all the things that people got from houses, cars, and land, all it takes is a cyclone. All it takes is a hurricane. All it takes is a mudslide. They come by, all it takes is a fire. Mm. And everything you got will be taken away. And, and you hear these people come on TV and say, oh, my house. Oh, my car. Oh, this is a material thing, and you can get it back. But one thing, if you lose, if you lose your soul, you can't get it back. Amen. My, my, my. Amen. So if we seek the kingdom of God first, and in righteousness, everything you ever desired in this life, yes. God said, I'll give it to you. Amen. You believe that this morning? Yes. Look at somebody that says, seek ye first. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God. And his, and his righteousness. Oh my God. Hallelujah. If you seek his righteousness, yes. how do you seek his righteousness? You just stop doing what's wrong and start doing what's right. Amen. I think the prophet went as far as said, cut off sin with righteousness. Amen. Oh my goodness. When you you know, some people it takes them a long time to change. Yes. It takes them a long time to rearrange their life. Yes. Oh, come on, somebody. But if we keep seeking God's righteousness, if we keep seeking his holiness, if we keep seeking him out, he said he'll add. Don't you know God know how to add? Don't you know God know how to multiply? I mean, to believe God knows how to add. He's added unto you life and happiness. You know, I'm reminded when Jesus was uh, uh, in the house, and the Bible said that the house was packed. And I think the scripture says that Jesus was in the house. I don't think y'all with me on this. I said Jesus is in the house. Come on, somebody. You see, I've learned a long time ago, I can preach to one or two, or I can preach to a thousand. It don't really matter to me, amen? Because wherever the anointing is, the anointing will break the yoke. The power of God will cause you to seek him with all your heart. Oh, my God. Times are running out, saying, Time are running out, and we need to draw closer to the Lord. Amen. The Bible said when Jesus was in Capernaum this second time around, there was in this house where he was. People was wall-to-wall -wall people. And they came to seek him out, to hear what he had to say. And in the midst, there were people not only getting healed and delivered, but there was those scribes and Pharisees there always trying to see what Jesus was up to. Oh, my God. They came looking, but they won't seek him. Are y'all with me on this? There's a whole lot of people got eyes, but they can't see. A lot of people got ears, but they can't hear. And they don't want to convert because they want to be like they are. My, my, my. Oh, this may prick your heart, but you see, Jesus was in Capernaum after he cleaned that man that was possessed with demons. And he went down on a second occasion, and all the world got around to Capernaum that Jesus was in the house. Let's go down and see what he got to say. The Bible said while he was expounding on the word of God, there was always, I'm here to tell you, when it comes time for church and when it comes time for getting your healing, there's always somebody going to be running late. Come on, somebody. But this man that was running late, his friends heard about Jesus that was in the healing business. Yeah. They heard that Jesus was on a healing campaign. Yeah. And they realized that the, the house was so packed with people, they couldn't get through to Jesus. And so these men came out with one of the most creative ideas that even blew Jesus away. Oh, come on, somebody. You know, when you blow Jesus away, you're doing something. When you learn to worship God in the spirit of truth and righteousness, when you do something to get to him by faith, when you seek him out, you understand the power of that key unlocking certain doors. The Bible said these men that brought this paraplegic man that couldn't walk, they brought him, and he had a, a sin-sick soul. He had a, a soul that was spiritually sick. Yes. And when they brought him on this pallet, on this special uh, carrying stretcher, they, they were somehow able to raise him from the ground and get him up on top of the roof. Yeah. Now think about that for a moment. I mean, they couldn't get in because the crowd, 
Come on, somebody. And if you've ever been in the military, come on, somebody. And a high-ranking officer were coming, the word got around, make a hole. Are y'all with me on this? And the high-ranking officer, me stand back, a high-ranking officer is coming through. Come on, somebody. Well, people said, let them through, and nobody moved. So they had to come up with an idea, how can we get to this man, Jesus? How can we seek him out? It ain't but one way. We can't come through the crowd. We can't come through the back door. We can't come through the window. I know what we'll do. We'll come through the roof. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that if you're seeking God out, sometimes you got to tear the roof off your heart. Sometimes you got to get rid of those things that are blocking you from getting down to Jesus. Because he's on the inside. You might have to take the roof off. Huh. They begin to tear the roof off. They're like you sitting up here now. All of a sudden, the roof starts coming off. Everybody looking up. Come on, somebody. Everybody looking up, wondering what's going on. Even Jesus himself. When they saw these men pulling back that, 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 that roof, and they saw this man up and suspended up on ropes. Are y'all with me on this? You, you put it in your mind. And they were slowly letting him down. You can see Jesus sitting up there saying, ain't this something? <laughs> now he, 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 probably, he probably didn't say it like that, but I'm trying to get you to understand something. You know, when somebody is seeking out Jesus, they'll go all out of their way. They'll go all out of their circumstances. They'll remember the commandments of God. They'll remember their walk in Christ. And they remember that he is a healer. And that he is a deliverer. And when you seek him right away, you can be delivered from whatever he has for you. One of the keys to unlock this door is to seek him out. Come on, somebody. The door was blocked. The windows were blocked. The crowd was thick. They couldn't get through, but this, this, these men was able to take the roof and let him down. And when they started coming down out of the roof, can you imagine him coming right down to the floor? And them scribes that was always looking and judging and condemning Jesus, come on, somebody. They didn't come around to seek him. They come around to start trouble. Come on, somebody. And I'm here to tell you that a lot of people that you're going to interact in your life ain't going to be nothing but trouble. And I'm here to tell you, you keep on seeking God. I'm here to tell you, you keep on searching for him. You keep on looking for him. Regardless of what they think or, or say about you, you keep seeking him out. And when they let him down, Jesus said, oh, what of great faith. Come on, somebody. When you put your faith to the test and you seek him out, you're going to find him. Somebody said you can find him if you will seek him out. Mm, mm, mm. When they let that man down, the Bible, listen to this, the Bible said those scribes that were sitting there began to reason within themselves. Says, uh, uh, and Jesus said to the man, he says, thy sins be forgiven thee. But because he preceded their, their thoughts, they didn't speak it, but they, they, they thought about it. Who is this man that can forgive sin except for God? And they called him, it's in their own heart, this man is blaspheming. And the Bible said because Jesus knew their thoughts, he said it's easy to say thy sins be forgiven thee because you see, anybody can say your sins be forgiven. But to say to that young man, pick up thy bed and walk. He was paralyzed, a paraplegic. The man wasn't able to walk, but yet he picked that up. And everybody was looking. You see, he had power to forgive him of his sins because his soul was sick. But he had power to heal his body because this man went through all he went through because he was seeking Christ. You understand that? He was seeking him. And when you seek Christ, he gives you a key to unlock that door. And when you open the door, he will be there waiting. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. 
Maybe you ain't quite getting this this morning. Maybe you got a lot on your mind, but I'm trying to bring you back to a place where you can worship God in the beauty of holiness, where you can magnify God and overcome all the obstacles that are going on in your life. You have the victory today. Look at somebody and say, I got the victory. Where I can't trace him, I got to trust him. My, my, my. He'll fix it for you. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, this man was healed and picked up his bed and walked out. Yes. The crowd, when they moved back, yes. they see this man that was once paralyzed. Yes. Now this man can walk upright. You ever been hurt and down in your legs? Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. I think last year this time, a year ago this time, I did a Jane Brown split on the ice. And I hyperextended my knee and my thigh. And I mean some pain. I came to church and I had to go through this sermon. But when I went to lay home, lay down at home, oh my God, the pain came back. Oh my God. If you ain't never had no pain in your legs and your muscles and tissues and had no cramps, you ain't going to have no idea what I'm talking about. But when God heals your body, when God heals your mind, when God heals your soul, when God heals your spirit, you can feel the power showering down on you. When you seek him out, when you seek him, you'll find him. When you search him out, you'll find him. Huh. You got to keep on asking. Keep on knocking. Keep on seeking. You'll find him every time. My God. When you're going through something and it don't look like you're going to get over it, I want you to start praising God. I want you to start worshiping God. I want you to start magnifying God. And see when the devil get in your face, he's going to lead seven different ways. God is going to give you power over the enemy. Give you power over scorpion. Give you power over serpent. My, my, my. Can you imagine that man getting healed? You know why he got healed? Because he understood that key of God's word. He understood that key of obedience. And he understood that key of seeking God. And I'm here to tell you, if you truly see God in everything that you're going through, before you make a decision, seek him out. Consult with God first. Make sure you make uh, plans to deal with him as a father. And I'm here to tell you, God will give you the answer. Amen. I'm here to tell you, God will reveal it to you. And in many ways, it may come strange. Huh. But he's going to answer you. Amen. And just because he, he don't do it right then and there, don't mean the answer is no. Amen. Sometimes God is waiting for the right time yes. and the right circumstance. Yes. And God is waiting on you to seek him. When you seek something out, you'll go all out of your way to find it. The huh. Bible said the kingdom of heaven is like a man when he, when he, when he had found a precious pearl. And he take everything he got himself and return, go and purchase this land because of that precious pearl. When you recognize who Jesus is and you seek him out, you can abandon all what the world has to offer. You see, many times, uh, if you're not careful, you will, vanity will be racing with sanity. Amen. Think about vanity racing and your sanity running along and vanity get out in front of you and you're trying to keep up with your sanity and you can't keep up with vanity, you wind up turning insane. Ha. Huh. Because a prophet and the great king of Israel said, vanity is vanity, all is vanity. The materialistic things in this world will come and go. But if you see heavenly things, for wherever your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. Come on, somebody. And wherever your treasures are, that's where your heart will be. And if you see the Lord, if you see in that timber up into heavenly places, God is going to respond to you in a positive manner. Amen. Why? Because he said, with your hands. Yes. Everybody look at your hands and say, my hands. My hands. Just look at your hands and say, my hands. My hands. 
a blessed hand. Because God blessed them. And everything my hand touch will prosper. You got to give God a praise for that. You see, how I know this because when, when Peter was, Peter and John was uh, going into the temple, they used to pray at 9 o'clock in the morning, 3 in the afternoon, the morning sacrifice and the afternoon sacrifice. And then they prayed again when the sun went down. And the Bible said one day that, that Peter and John was going into the temple to pray. And it was called the gate beautiful. And in biblical time, it was called the Corinthian gates. It was what they call the, the women's gate or the court of the women's. And it was a good place if you want to beg for money. Come on, somebody. Uh, you know those who hit you up for some money on the street. There was a time that you say, you have any change or you have a quarter. Now they ask you, give me a dollar. You got $5 on you? And I said, $5? Man, what you going to do with $5? He said, you know, you know, the cost of begging, it went up. I said, what do you mean? You can't get nothing for no dollar no more. You need two or three dollars now. Are y'all with me on this? I mean, I'm trying to figure out what the economics they working with. They ain't begging for no dollar no more. They tell you, listen, give me five dollars, ten dollars on. Come on, somebody. And I'm telling you, I need to get out of here with a cup myself with you. Heaven. You getting all the money. I need to be out of here, too. You getting that kind of money. Come on, somebody. You see, you can't judge a book by its cover. Don't go by when you're looking at people thinking they ain't got nothing. There's some of these people that beg and got more than you. I'm talking about the material thing. Because they ain't found out where and where people like to spend money. You go, they know how to hang out. You be out on the American Legion Highway, you go in the savings or stop and shop. Come on, somebody. They even got a special corner. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm after. Even Salvation Army got it down to a sign. Am I talking right? They got their little bucket right there in front of the store. You coming out, ding, 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 drop your money. I know what I'm talking about. Don't think people ain't doing a job on your psyche and they know how to seek out getting your money. They find your need and they fulfill that need. Well, y'all ain't ready for that kind of preaching. I kind of hit you from the oblique. I come, come at an angle and hit you. What do you mean by that? I'm telling you, you watch. When they start begging, come on, somebody. They got you down to a sign. I saw you in there putting all that money in your pocket. I was teasing with one of my first cousins a few summers ago. She come up on the porch. She was, oh, she was decked out. She was matching all over, pocketbook, hair, shoes. Come on, somebody. She was looking good. She come by to see my uncle, I mean, my first cousin. And when she sit on the porch, she told me, I'll be out here talking with cousin. I said, look at you. She said, what? I said, you got everything together, huh? She said, yeah. She said, I heard you from Boston. I said, no, I'm from Raleigh. I just live in Boston right now. She said, she said, I ain't never been too far a place. She said, in fact, I ain't been more than 50, 60 miles from Raleigh. I said, look at you, all that dress and outfit you got on all sharp. And I said, I bet you got your, your 50s and your 20s, one behind another and your 10. She said, you been looking at my father, I was just teasing with her. I said, I ain't looked at nobody's pocketbook. I was just asking a question. Okay, y'all right back to what I'm saying. If you seek God out, you will find him. If God give you a key, come on, somebody. Thank you, brother. I, I missed part of my most important sermon. I guess it was meant for Sister Watkins to show up right now. Somebody say amen. amen. She don't know, but, but she was, the other day she was, she was taking keys. This ain't no good, this is the key now. You pull something out like this, everybody say, hit the floor! <laughs> Pastor then brought a gun to church. Sometimes you got to wait, minister green, sometimes you got to show up with two keys. 
You gotta show up with two keys sometimes to unlock some of that stuff at work. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you gotta show up and let people know I'm double barrel today. I got keys all over the place. This is this is Sister Walking Keys. She hang on the wall to remind the children of the sermon that I'm preaching this week. God bless us all. Thank you, sister. I'm going to put them back. I'm gonna put them. I got to use them for my sermon. I told her I was going to use them for my sermon. And it says here, made in China, but we got it in America. I got you thinking. All I'm trying to get you to understand, there are keys to the kingdom that unlock certain doors. Are y'all with me on this? And sometimes to unlock a certain door, sometimes you got a bottom lock and a top lock. Sometimes when you're trying to get into a situation and get out of a circumstance, that God will give you one lock to turn one way. Come on, somebody. And a key to another lock to turn the other way. And you got to be able to turn both at the same time to push the door through. Are y'all with me on this? Many times God is working on you, seeking him, and sometimes you have to seek him and use the key of knowledge, the key of wisdom. Come on, somebody. The key of the word to unlock that door so you can get in. Uh, when Peter and John were going into the temple, there was another man at the temple begging. Y'all forgot about him, didn't you? But I didn't. And while he was there begging, arms for the poor. Everybody say it with me. Arms for the poor. Don't tell me you don't know how to beg. Sometimes when you're in a situation with God, you can say, arms for the poor. See, y'all ain't getting this. You want something from God, he know you know how to beg. Come on, somebody. And some of y'all, you don't understand, a part of you seeking him in many ways is, Lord, I need your help. If you need help, ain't that a form of begging? Well, don't act all like you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you seek God, if you search him out, God will give you a double key. Come on, somebody. You got double keys because some of y'all got these fancy cars. It don't matter whether you turn it this way or that way, as long as you can stick it in the ignition. Am I right? Okay, then stick with me then. This do look like a gun, though, don't it? Uh, but it's a key. Oh my God. Somebody say, I got the keys to the kingdom. Oh, my God. And the Bible said when they went into the temple, they don't tell you how much money this man had accumulated, how much wealth he had. It was just every day. Can you imagine if you had a responsibility every day to take your friend down to the church, which is called the church or the gate beautiful before the temple on the east side of Jerusalem, which is called the women's court, which is in biblical time is called the Corinthians gate. And he knew that when people came through that gate, they came with money or they came with substance. And today, you just can't give people your money. You have to tell them, I'll buy you. You see, I'm, I'm troubled by the fact that they got McDonald's out of Dudley because I used to, when I go through there, and they say, I want some money, I say, come on, I'll buy you a hamburger or something to drink. <laughs> and they'll tell you, no, I ain't. I say, what do you mean? Ain't you hungry? Yeah, but I want the money. I know what you want that money for. You want some drugs and some crack and some cocaine, don't you? I know what you're going to do with my money. Well, I ain't giving it to you. Yeah. I've been told you ain't no good. You only gave me a dollar last week. I said, you have to thank God for that dollar. See, that's what I'm talking about. They're going to talk trash after they get your money because you already know what they're going to do it, and you're going to aid them in the giving. Oh, I gave it to them. Whatever they do is their business. No, your hands is blessed. And when you put your money on that hand, that hand on that money, and give it to them, that money is blessed. You don't have to say amen. I know what I'm talking about. But when this man, this poor beggar, was at the gate, beautiful begging, all for the poor, all for the poor. And old Peter and John were going to the temple, and all of a sudden, they probably seen this man many, many times, but this day was a different day. This man was seeking their wealth. 
But the wealth they were seeking for, he was seeking for, was not a material gain, but one of spiritual gain. It was not seeking one material pennies, but one spiritual access to the throne of God. Armed for the poor. And Peter looked on him, and he looked on Peter, and the Bible said, they looked at each other as if the beggar were going to get something from Peter. You know, when people look at you a certain way, come on, somebody. But y'all look at me like that. Amen. You got family and loved ones around Christmas time. You don't see them but once a year. They don't call you but once every other month or maybe once every six months. And many times when they call you, they always want something. Amen. You have to say amen. I know where I'm going with this. Y'all can say amen. You don't have to say amen. But they want something. Amen. 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 They don't want to be bothered with you. You can't call them to do nothing. Come on, help me. Come on, I want you to do this and that. Man, I'm busy. They ain't doing nothing. They ain't doing nothing. Don't call me for nothing. But come Christmas time, everybody getting to give them some money or car, they got their hand out. I know y'all don't like me sometimes. But I'm going to still keep my key in preaching to unlock certain doors. And some, sometimes your lock gets stuck and you got to, come on somebody, you got to work with it for a while. You know what I'm talking about. You ever had a key you know it worked and you didn't open that door so many times, you didn't want some of the, some of the carvings on the bottom? You know what I'm trying to say. And, and the chamber don't quite work and there you go. Now you got to bring a locksmith in. And old Jesus stepped in there and said, I'll open that door for you. Come on, somebody. I'll knock on that door for you. I'll open that door for you. If you got a little problem, I'll step in and open the door for you. My God. Arm for the poor. And he was looking at Peter. Peter was looking at him. And you could see his hand out. And Peter said, silver and gold. Have I none? But such as I have, I got the power of the Holy Ghost. I got the anointing of God. I have the keys of life in my hands. Rise up, rise up, rise up, and walk. He reached down and lifted the man up. When you see God, with all your heart, you'll rise up, you'll walk with him, you'll talk with him. My, my, my. Rise up. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. When Jesus reached down and lifted that man up, I'm sorry, Peter reached down and lifted that man up in the name of Jesus. The Bible said the man leaped. Come on, somebody. I, I, I have to admit, I can appreciate uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. And he go to jam. Come on, somebody. But when this man come up out of his sin, come up out of his devastation, come up out of his pain and his hurt, when he felt the power of God being transformed, God can give you power that will transform your life. You can see that man leaping. I mean, can you imagine? You ever been so happy you were just jumping? Leaping and bouncing all over the place. Hollering, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I want you to understand something. When God pulled that old beggar's coat off, he's going to give you a new robe. He's going to give you a new coat. He's going to give you a new power. He's going to give you keys to the kingdom. He's going to give you power to overcome the enemy. He's giving you a 
your key. Come on, somebody. Pass these keys around. Pass them around till they come around to me again. Come on, somebody. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Get that key in your life. You're touching that key as a point of contact. Everybody touch it who can touch it. There's a key that will unlock certain things in your life. All you got to do is apply it. Use it. Come on, somebody. Let him have his way today. Hey. This man was shouting and praising and worshiping God. Whereas he was considered an outcast outside the temple. Now he couldn't go in, but now that he got power in his life, he can walk upright. Come on, somebody. When God gives you power and you seek him out, you can walk upright. Nobody ever carry you no more. Nobody ever push you no more. You can walk under your own power. You can walk under your own anointing. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul, and that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins, and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area, and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.